Howard Zinn. Bringing in the sheaves. This week, when I got off Amtrak at South Station, I was greeted by the Boston Herald headline, Weld wants to fingerprint welfare recipients. So yesterday, I went to the State House to stand vigil with the Social Workers Professional Organization and then go up to hear the governor try to explain to the Human Services Committee why his proposal should become law. I was amazed how red his face was. A very large man, and I thought I could see him sweating under his dandy Yankee suit and polish. The committee handed him his head, but he seemed not to notice. Later that night, I went to hear Howard Zinn, civil rights and anti-war activist, the author of People's History of the United States of America, talk about his memoir, You Can't Be Neutral on a Moving Train. He talked about working in a shipyard and being a bombardier in World War II, where he participated in the very first napalm raid on a village in France where several thousand German soldiers were hiding out, awaiting the end of the war. He talked about the Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam Anti-War Movement, and the movement we now need to avert civil war on the one hand, or fascist tyranny on the other, as we reach the ends of affluence and grapple again with what it means to be really, truly a civilization. And after I left, and I got on the train to go to Stone Soup to discover the wealth of character poetry in America once more, I found myself whistling a verse I'd forgotten I knew, uncertain as to what it was, until the words came to me in this autumn, the harvest of half my life, the life of my nation, America, and suddenly I knew that bullies come and bullies go. A big ape may dominate the troop for a while, but then one will make a slow, secret approach, and another a silly, brazen sally, and allegiances form and groups come together, and the bigger the bully makes himself, the bigger target he is. And as much as we love a hierarchy and desperately need to know our place, there's something hates a tyrant, and all must be secure in our space. And I heard the words of harvest and plenty in a way I'd never known, speaking of justice to oppression and hope against repression. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And all I could feel was pity for the red-faced governor and fury for judgment day will come, and the poor and the neglected and the shun will be waiting, waiting to show him the print he left on their lives.